Right. Fear me! You should be scared, because I am a powerful, big, dangerous alicorn. <laughs> no one likes to admit it, but I am a lot cooler when I look like this. I got a mohawk, the purple eyes, the subtle dark color scheme. Deep down, all know I'm better than a pretty colored- <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, um, maybe I should talk about this. admitting when I say I enjoy a good villain character. There are several fictional villains out there that many of us either relate to, find entertaining, even love to see defeated. From cartoons to writings, comics, and of course in games and live action movies. Villains have always played a role when it comes to fictional storytelling, but they tend to differentiate between themselves depending on what style they fall under within the story. Or what I mean is, um, well, I like to look at them as a certain class. There's the cliche villain, or the, uh, grr, I'm so angry, fear me villain, like T-Rex from G1 My Little Pony pilot episode, or Madame Mim from Sword in the Stone, or my personal favorite, Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. There are fearful villains, or villains that frighten us the most. Maybe this is a personal opinion, but I find Darth Vader to be very terrifying to me, or Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street, or, uh, <laughs> Zool from Ghostbusters? <laughs> There's a class of villains that I tend to find complicating because we the audience can relate to them on an emotional level, or the sympathetic villains, such as Thanos from Disney's Marvel movies, Nightmare Move from My Little Pony Generation 4, or my personal favorite, King Haggard from The Last Unicorn. Of course, you have your love to hate villains, the types that we despise so much we cannot wait to see them get defeated or destroyed. Yes, I am looking at you, Emperor Palpatine, Cozy Glow, and Trunchbull from Matilda. <laughs> but then there are your unintelligible villains, which can be more of a plot device or an obstacle in a story than anything. But usually they are villains that don't even know they are villains, like Godzilla from Shin Godzilla, Graboids from Tremors, or even the Doomsday Machine from Star Trek. They they are technically villains of the story, but it's not like they are self-aware of it either. We don't really sympathize or relate to that class in particular, but we understand that they are animals acting out on their own regard or because they are forced or programmed to. So why is it that we, the audience, still like to watch and enjoy villains in particular? Well, when I asked myself this question, I admit I had to look inside myself a bit and do a little self-analysis on myself as a person, and I did come to a few conclusions. First off, I strive to be a good person, and most of us in the world aim to do the same thing. As individuals, we believe that we are compassionate, work hard, and grow to be better versions of ourselves. So when we see that other individuals are deemed bad for committing a crime, we aim to distance ourselves away from such. Where reality is concerned, if a real evil individual has committed a crime and they show any relation to us, whether that be through personality traits, locations, even similar names, we want nothing to do with them because we view it as a self-threat. Going against our country laws is considered bad, and therefore we never want to be in close relations to those who committed crimes or evil or brutality. Otherwise, we view it as a reflection upon ourselves. What are we teaching our kids? To respect the law! However, I notice with fictional villains, we tend to gravitate towards those that we find similarities within ourselves that would be considered good traits. This was even tested by various psychological research that some individuals tend to identify that they like the flaws of villains that would be egotistical or selfish simply because the villain isn't real. Why though? 
Why is it different between reality's criminals and fictional criminals? Well, if I had to be honest with myself, it's because I feel safe exploring my darker personality traits without the fear or repercussions of actually hurting anyone around me. The mindset being that if the villain isn't real, then technically we aren't really like them, which in essence helps us to feel like we aren't self-destructing or causing harm, merely exploring our inner emotions. I enjoy fictional villains because not only does it give me the opportunity to seek out flaws within myself, but I can do so in an entertaining way, and there go have fluent and enlightening discussions with my other friends. A good example? Well, take Maleficent. Oh. Idiot! Imbeciles! She is a powerful being with little to no remorse. She's confident in her powers, beauty, and goals, and does not waver or falter against any of her adversaries. She has the aura of a being that commands attention and respect, something I openly admit I wish I could have more of. It is a flaw of mine, I will admit, that while everyone should be respected, it shouldn't be at the cost of other safety or freedoms. But I can't help but admire that she commands everybody with the wave of her staff. <laughs> <laughs> but then there are villains I love to fear. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Why would you want to be afraid, Lightning Bliss? And it's simple, really. It makes me feel alive. The fear of impending doom, even though it's not real, gives you that surge of adrenaline and anxiety that comes with a fight or flight response. And in some circumstances, can also give you endorphins, that chemical balance of feeling good on the inside that comes with being after stress. Zul would be the best villain type for me in this regard. It doesn't help the fact he has a gut-wrenching role or both of a mix of a low bass lion and bear sound, something that would jog any prey animal instinct to flee, but he's a competent ghost dog from the underworld that has no remorse. Not to mention he technically cannot be killed just due to the fact, well, he's a ghost. <laughs> to pick one more for a top three of my favorite villains, I would have to go with Hooves Down, Keen Haggard from The Last Unicorn on a sympathy level. Most villains like Haggard, or Thanos for that matter, tend to have relatable emotions or goals that many of us could probably sympathize with. In Haggard's case, he is an old man that not once been happy in his entire life. Even when he adopted a son, taking on the role of a father, raising one of his own, something a lot of people find fulfilling and happy with being a parent. He merely shrugged it off though, as it was a passing pleasant feeling that died very quickly within him. To which he admits that the only thing that ever gave him joy were unicorns. I like to watch them. They fill me with joy. This was a man who suffered a long life of being unhappy, never feeling joy until he came upon these immortal mythical beings. He had enjoyed their presence so much that honestly he felt he died from having the feeling, and thus believed in order that for him to keep this joy in his life was to capture and enslave all the unicorns for his enjoyment. The man is insane, there's no doubt about that, but as we the audience can likely agree, a life without happiness or joy, just depression or despair? It's a painful idea to think about. One that can even border on dark thoughts that I do not wish to say on this channel because I be leaving the PG-13 rating at this point. His intentions were beyond mad, but I can certainly relate to the feeling of fear living a life without joy or happiness. But thankfully, that's why I have friends and loved ones in my life. They do fill me with joy and happiness after all. Needless to say, I enjoy villains because in an odd way, I can relate to them on a personality level, but also it can provide a safe opportunity on reevaluating myself. Though I should note that I really get my joy when I'm watching them on the big screen for entertainment reasons as a whole. Villains are a part of storytelling, and they provide us the audience with a thrill and wonder, as well as a means to encourage our heroes and protagonists to win the day. If a story doesn't have a good villain to carry the story along, it goes without saying that it doesn't feel like a victory when our hero shoves up. You can't have a good hero without a good villain, after all. What is light without dark? <laughs> I'm curious to see what you the fans have to say in the comments below. Be sure to share this video, like, 
comment, and subscribe, as well as hit the bell button to get more updates on my channel, as it helps to support my electricity bill. And you would be a fool not to take the time to check out the Lightning Bliss Patreon page or shopping website, as well to help support my content. <laughs> it is appreciated. I am Thunderblight. Keep an eye out for those rainbows. They come after the storm. <laughs> Or the sympathetic villains, such as Thanos from Disney's Marvel movies, Nightmare Moon from Milo Pony and it. My <laughs> she is powerful, B. She is. <laughs> Zool would be the best villain. Villain. But if I had to pick one of the more. Yeah.